Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is J.R. Moore coming to you live from deep in the mountains of the Missouri Ozarks on Wednesday, the 6th day of November, year of our Lord, 2013. Welcome to the John Moore Show. Well, I, yesterday I received a briefing from one of my confidential sources. This is your heads up here, ladies and gentlemen. This has to do with the Google the barges. You may have read about them. If you haven't, Wikipedia has a article about them, and there's other articles published in mainstream uh, news about the Google the barges. My source is a U.S. Navy SEAL. He said weeks ago that when the barge arrives in Portland, Maine, and San Francisco, there's actually three barges, one in Portland, Maine, and two in San Francisco Bay, that were very close to the real use of these barges being implemented. The real use being command and control of the foreign troops that will be deployed in the United States. So there you, there's your heads up, ladies and gentlemen. This is my private intelligence from a confidential source that I know and trust personally. These barges are 246 feet long, 72 feet wide, four stories of Connexes welded together and highly modified on the inside to accomplish their goals. Living quarters, command and control, high-tech communications, and so forth. Tomorrow evening, we will have a meetup at the Benton Square Restaurant in Rolla, Missouri. The topic will be bug outs and bug out bags. I'll be the presenter. If you want to bring your own bug out bag, you're welcome to. No firearms or ammunition, please. At the Benton Square Restaurant. We'll have dinner in the public dining area at 6 p.m., and our meeting will be upstairs at 7 p.m. in the private meeting room. You do not need to buy a meal to attend. Details at my website, thelibertyman.com. Got some interesting earth change headlines at standeo.com. Check them out. I don't want to take away any more time from our special guests. This morning we do have our special guest, Professor James McKinney. Professor McKinney is a credentialed astrophysicist, has taught mathematics at the university level, He's a radio talk show host as well and author of a number of books. I encourage you to purchase and read all of his books. It'll be a great education. Jim, good morning, sir. John, how are you? I hope my sound is relatively okay here today. Well, it's it's a little hollow sounding, but uh, acceptable, more than acceptable. No, that's, that's, that's more me. I'm, John, I'm not feeling really well this morning. Um, it, uh, I think something I ate last night. Uh huh. And so, well, that'll uh, do it. Uh, but um, if if I could, I'd, I'd like to just go rest. And um, but I wanted to show up and, and you know not just not call in. Well, if you if you need to take a break, um, why don't you go ahead and do that and get your rest? Uh, give us a quick heads up on what your radio show is going to be tomorrow evening. I'll be talking about, I found a new, interesting, real interesting passage in an ancient text, and I'll be talking about that, about uh, basically we're all familiar with what comets look like. They look like a nice, smooth, white tail. Many people saw hail bop up in the sky, and uh, we've all seen pictures of comets, but a, a real comet, a uh, big comet, is not going to look like this sweet little genteel object, so I'll be talking about that. And also I have uh, two releases coming up that I'll be discussing, uh, and I've been discussing one, uh, but one was kind of a surprise release that um, uh, now, when, when you say release, realized, Jim, are you talking about a DVD, a book, an article? What are we talking about, a release? Uh, yeah, these will be in the form of uh, DVDs. Uh, okay. The first one, which which I'm releasing right away, is interesting. And uh, John, you knew about this. You were actually part of it. The Japanese equivalent of the 60 Minutes television program came oh, yes. to the United States. Yes. And interviewed uh, me, interviewed you, and then they presented as it's just like 60 Minutes, uh, but in Japanese, it's the number one show in Japan. In a 20 minute segment, they do three 20 segment, 20 minute segments in an hour there, just like 60 minutes here. And one of those segments was on the topic of Planet X. 
And so when the Japanese were interviewing me, they interviewed me for three hours and about three and a half hours. And I recorded the entire thing on my own equipment also. So I'm going to put out that video of me being interviewed by the Japanese. And the interesting thing is, this is what the Japanese want to know about Planet X. They asked the questions. They they came loaded with questions, and we went for three and a half hours. And so I'm going to put that video out, and the, the topic is simply what the Japanese want to know about Planet X. It'll be in a DVD format, so that's going uh, releasing right now. And the other one I, I'm not going to release. It's going to come out at Christmas. That's the one I've been prepping my audience for uh, over the last five shows. Uh, and uh, so that one I'll be uh, also putting up. It makes sense to put these up at the same time. Um, and uh, one for pre-sale and the other one will actually be shipping here in about uh, within a, about a week. So, Okay. Uh, anyway, that's, anyway, that's that'll be my up, Jim. show topic. Jim, you need, you need to go crawl back in the bed and get some rest, sir. Yeah, I, I got some chicken noodle soup later get in the some day. Rest here. <laughs> there we go. We appreciate you being a good trip no, for calling in. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to just not call in, um, but I'll I'll be fine. I, I feel okay. It's just that I'm you know uh, would be better off getting some rest today, and then I'll be back to my normal self hopefully later in the day. All right. Well, get some rest, Jim. We'll talk privately soon. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's Professor McCanning. Uh, he's uh, a little bit under the weather here, but being a good, the good trooper he is, he called in and, and gave us a quick update. Uh, at the uh, excellent website, Before It's News, there is an article there. You go to the top right-hand corner of their homepage. The title of it is Army Captain Takes to Facebook. Warning, DHS Preparing for War. Great article. You need to read it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. This is J.R. Moore. It is Wednesday, the 6th day of November. I started out this broadcast talking about the Google barges. Uh, the, the cover story is that they'll be used to entertain VIPs in private. They described the upper deck as the quote-unquote party deck. Uh, you look at this thing. You look at photographs of this thing. It has a very severe industrial look about it, uh, uninviting, industrial, bland, boxy look about it, unattractive, industrial. looks like a warehouse on the water, uh, for want of a better term. Uh, not the kind of place that you would say, oh, gee, I'd really like to go for a ride on that. Of course, being a barge, you can't go anywhere under its own power. It has, does not have its own independent power. It's not a ship. It's a barge. Dependent upon, uh, tugboats to move it about from one place to the other. So I'm getting this information. Uh, I had to jump through some hoops to keep, uh, my sources, my source confidential and private. Uh, it was worth it. Uh, it, it there was a little bit of expense involved on my part to accomplish that goal, but we did accomplish that goal, and now we have a, a secure confidential means of communication between the two of us. I don't know what's going to happen the next six months or 12 months. I know what could happen the next six months or 12 months, or possibly even as soon as next Tuesday and Wednesday, the 12th and 13th, when I've got this grid down exercise. Quite a bit of attention to my show yesterday. We were talking about this briefly. The precedence is clear and convincing that uh, the powers that be have on numerous occasions had training exercises become the real deal. Go hot, so to speak. There was an ATF training exercise at the Murrah Federal Building in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when that federal building blew up that day. 
there was a North American air defense exercise taking place on 9-11-01. Many, many examples. No point in listing them. Point is, they've done this before, and why wouldn't they do it again, given the success they've had over the years? Of course they would. Success breeds success. If you haven't seen the National Geographic film, American Blackout, I believe it's worth your time. Take a look at it. There's a number of places to see it. These uh, It was broadcast live um, a week and a half ago. number of places on the internet to watch it now there's lessons to be learned there it's 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 entertainment you have to keep in mind it is entertainment on one hand on the other uh, the scenarios that they outline um, most of them do have some feasibility not all of them but most of them have some feasibility could happen The teenage boy left at home alone by his mother, the nurse who went to work, didn't come back for two weeks. The four students, college students, trapped inside an elevator in a dormitory. The couple in, on the 45th floor, penthouse apartment in New York City, I believe it was, somewhere on the East Coast. The family, I believe it was a Texas family, who went to their bug out location and the things that they did things they did right, the things they did wrong. Some glaring mistakes made by those folks. We have a regular caller here. We've got uh, Glenn in Philadelphia. Good morning, Glenn. Hi. Um, you know, I was thinking about the Google barges. Well, what you're saying uh, makes sense when you consider the information they have at their disposal. They have all the data that their little cars collected running around taking pictures of all the neighborhoods. Couple that with the Census Bureau data with all the GPS uh, locations for people's front doors and all that kind of stuff. Boy, they can probably uh, guide people real precisely to where they want to be, you know? Well, it's a combination of brain power. They've got the uh, hardware. We all know mm-hmm. that. And, and getting the hardware is simply a matter of writing checks and getting a delivered UPS. But what they've got is some of the best IT people on the planet working for them. Now, right. command and control will be a matter, a military matter, where the the the, uh, the officers the, uh, of these various militaries will be stationed on these barges and conducting command and control uh, using high frequency radio and satellite communications. Right, right. You know, John, I've been recently, so I find myself thinking. You know, as a Christian, I feel like um, I'm, I'm not that enamored of this world. The Bible says, love not the world nor the things in it. Jesus said, behold, I go to prepare a place uh, for you that where I am, you may be also, you know, preparing a place for his pride. Um, you know, I see my sojourn, I think of the songs that were, you know, it's just passing through, you know. Or, um, I see my sojourn here as something that's like I'm not that uh, tenaciously bent on holding on to, you know, if I want to be, live redemptively while I'm here, and then, you know, when the Lord's ready, I'm willing to go, you know, I'm, I, I'm not that bent on surviving tumult, uh, tumult and uh, surviving the zombie apocalypse scenario, unless God has some reason for me to be here, uh, you know, doing something redemptive, which in, in that case, I'm fine with it, you know, so a certain, certain, you know, yeah, Understood. so that's what I find yeah, with all this stuff getting ready to come, okay. on, come on down, bye-bye. Real good. Thanks for the call, Glenn. We appreciate it. The call number is 800-313-9443. I had coffee yesterday afternoon with a friend of mine. He's heavily involved in research and development of projectiles, small arms uh, projectiles, uh, optics. He's designed uh, a reticle one of the, uh, that's in use by uh, Night Force, one of its premier uh telescopic site company in, in the world right now is Night Force, and he, deci- he designed one of the reticles for them. Um, weapons design, uh, sensing devices, uh, and so forth. And uh, we reached an agreement uh, that we're going to move forward with on a couple, well, a set couple of agreements we're going to move forward with on a couple of projects we'll be working on together. Uh, great guy. He uh, is a 
veteran of, of the Afghan conflict back in the 80s, working for the State Department, uh, where he was doing counter-sniper duty. Uh, he's one of the guys that I look forward to, if, if need be, having in my foxhole with me. Uh, regular caller here on hold, John from Austin, Texas. Good morning, John. Good morning, John. How are you? Fantastic. How are you, sir? Oh, hanging in there, hanging in there. Um, you know, it's interesting. We've got a lot, it seems like uh, we're going to have the potential, the potential for a very busy November. <laughs> with I'll, the, be, I'll be glad when it's the 1st of January. That's all I can say. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's get through um, November. Let's just get through November. The next week, you know, that's our first uh, challenge would be getting through next week. Uh, Lindsey Graham is very concerned about March uh, when uh, Obamacare kicks in full speed. Uh, that could, by itself, could collapse the economy. We have a very fragile economy, John, as you know. And, and not, o- not only uh, that, John, uh, uh, like I've already received, my insurance was canceled. Uh, my wife and son, they're on a separate policy. Uh, hold that thought. We gotta, hold on through the bottom of the hour break here, John. we got a break coming up. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. This is J.R. Moore. It is Wednesday, the 6th day of November. Freeze Dry Guys November special is the Freeze Dried Feast. Easy Thanksgiving meals. When you want or need them the most. So you could have this tasty, nutritious, freeze dried, uh, and dehydrated meal. It's coming Thanksgiving if you order now. Or put it back and have it for future use. It would be a, a great thing at, at some future date if, in hard times to have a, this selection of food. Now, you get six number 10 cans. Here's what's in the, these six number 10 cans. Two of these cans are turkey tetrazzini, freeze-dried mountain house, a can of green beans, a can of dehydrated diced potatoes, a can of dehydrated sweet potato diced, and a can of raspberry crumble, your dessert entree. Retail price is $189.14 on sale, delivered to your door to you, to the lower 48, $159.95. You can check out all the nutritional facts at his website, freezedryguy.com. There's a link from my website, thelibertyman.com. Toll-free order line, Pacific Business Hours, 866-404-3663. I say again, 866-404-3663. Four zero four thirty six sixty three. We have uh, John from Austin on hold. Let's just jump right back in there, John. Yeah, John. Um, I agree. The Obamacare, you know, obviously is a, not about health care. Well, well let, let me use you as an example here for a, a little bit, John. Uh, sure. Do you have any idea yet of, of where your insurance premiums will be going to? What they'll be uh, Yes, uh, a little bit. With my wife and son, uh, we have a 53 percent increase. And and and, uh, and how much? What, what will be the new dollar amount on top of what you used to spend? Uh, well, I mean it's 53, it's, so it's it's doubling. It's going up to close to 500 a month for them. And this is stripped down insurance, John. And this would be an increase in a 250 dollar a month increase. Yes. Okay. And but is there going to be an increase for you as well? I'm not sure yet because okay. Well, let's just stick with this 250. All uh, right. Um, before this new increase, that 250 dollars uh, may very well have been disposable income that you could use to take your wife out to dinner and theater, maybe watch a professional sporting event, maybe have a, a weekend getaway. Uh, it's, to, it's a it's, it's, it's a used car payment. Well, okay. I mean, you know, I mean uh, that won't uh, that won't be there now. Right, it's gone. It'll be, it'll be, but for many people, that would be disposable income to spend right. on the things I just listed. Now, John, as you as you well know, a very big chunk of the American economy is based on people having disposable income. Right. Money they can spend on anything they want. Sporting events, uh, uh, entertainment, you know, going out for uh, to restaurants, um, 
lodging where you go out to have a, 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 maybe go to a hotel for a weekend at some resort or something of that nature. That's a really big chunk of the American economy, and that's what's going to be damaged because people can cut that out of their activities to make up the difference that they're going to be spending on health insurance. And it's happening at a time that we're going into a traditional heavy spending season for the holidays. Right. So uh, goods and services will be diminished. Uh, you know, I mean, the, the ripple effect is going to be very strong through the economy. Uh, no question about it. And, uh, you know, and then there are people like me who don't exactly know where we're going to land yet and uh, trying to figure out where we're going and how we're doing this. And, I mean, I had a wonderful plan. It was, uh, be, I don't know if I've told you, John, I've, Ended up uh, being classified as disabled. My back I don't, and I don't recall nerve, that. No. Um, everything caught up with me, and, and my my lower chassis needs a rebuild in the worst kind of way. Uh, as the old saying goes, if I knew I was going to live this long, I would have took better care of myself. Yeah, that you know, I told you I was a commercial diver, right? And. Uh, Ended up with me uh, having degenerative disc and back and nerve damage, and uh, that has now presented itself in a very. I have no feeling in my feet, as an example, uh, from the instep to the toes, that kind of thing. Uh, but anyway, enough of that. Um, and so. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, I tore the meniscus in my right knee. Right. So I, I, I limp on over to the orthopedic surgeon, and uh, he goes, uh, I'm not going to operate and fix it. And I'm like, what? And he goes, it doesn't make any difference. You're, you're not working. You're a little overweight. Um, no need to do surgery on it. It'll... You know, and I said, what about the pain? He goes, well, that's what pain pills are for. You need a different doctor. I mean, oh, you know. no kidding, but this guy was like, he's worked on me for years. Really? And and he's getting out. He's bailing. Yeah. I, I, we, and uh, do you got, know why he's bailing? Yeah, he goes, he's not going to put up with this. He's going to... Uh, Be more specific, put up with what? The, the Obamacare, the rules, the regulations, okay. the uh, uh, being told what to practice and not to practice. Uh, you have the formularies changing where they're putting you on generics. And, and of course, there are different levels of generics. And, um, like, like, let's say you take a statin drug like Crestor, which is, like, one of the best. Okay. And they'll put, they'll put you on a tier three generic, which is like made up in someone's bathtub. Is, and I'm, I'm being exaggerating, but it's not a, not nearly as effective. And, uh, you know, the, the whole thing is, is, is basically, and I think we all know this, they're going to just screw up our medical system to the point that it will drive it to a single-payer government-run system. That's the goal, in my opinion. Uh, you're not the only person. Well, a lot of people uh, have come to the same conclusion, John. Uh, well, I mean, it's come out of line. Obama's mouth back when he was campaigning and stuff in, in, in 07 and 08 that he was a big supporter of the single-payer system. I mean, that's his mouth, that's his words to our ears. Which, do you know which model, uh, looking around the planet, which healthcare, national healthcare model he would like to emulate? I don't myself, do you know? Um, the UK system used to be pretty good, but it, it, it's, it's gone bad. They, they all, I guess if anybody, if I had to go somewhere to another country to get worked on, 
uh, Switzerland would probably be my best choice. Okay. Um, I understand. I understand your opinion on that, but uh, well, the, the question I'm asking is: Is there a healthcare system that Obama wants to emulate that you're aware of? Well, I mean, you know, uh, if you look at what he's doing, and some of this, a lot of people have tied it back to what was designed by Hitler. Uh, and the Weimar Republic to bring in that level of... Yeah, well, of course, the Third Reich inherited the Weimar Republic uh, infrastructure, which included their health care system. Right, and, and of course it was... Uh, uh, oh, God, I'm Kaiser... Uh, Otto, uh, uh, anyway, it was designed by the Chancellor to come in with the socialized method, and it was initially for government workers and elderly. Right. And then Hitler took it and took it out a step further and used it as a way of purging. The, Undesirables. Uh, right, exactly. And, you know, I was sitting here thinking about this for a minute, John. You have... The Obamacare system, which is tied with the IRS, which is tied into all the massive databases. And let's say in a tyrannical government, <laughs> costs this, um, that they don't like patriots, they don't like Christians, they don't like, um, you know, a whole group of people, Jews don't even apply. Hold that thought, John. we got a break. Call number is 800-313-9443. We'll be right there. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. This is J.R. Moore. It is Wednesday, the 6th day of November. My website is thelibertyman.com, thelibertyman.com. I'm working with Tim Spencer to get a, a very special new uh, segment uh, on my website. I don't want to talk about it yet, but I, I hope to get it done in the next day or two. And I'll announce uh, that it'll be a lot of fun and very beneficial for you guys once it's up on my website, thelibertyman.com. You'll find the energy cleaner for sale there, $285, shipping included to American zip codes. Great way to mitigate pain, have healing, have more physical energy, mental energy, you get the best night's sleep you've had in years, stronger libido. The energy cleaner at my website, thelibertyman.com, toll free auto line, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Here it is, 800. 800- Five nine two nine five four three. I say again, eight hundred five nine two nine five four three. We've got several calls on hold. John, we need to wrap up your comments and move along here. All right, John, let's do it then. Um, in my opinion, one of the things that is the potential for abuse is the denial of care. And let's say you are not politically in alignment with the administration. They could turn around and that life-saving stent you need, maybe not, or cancer treatment, maybe not, or they turn around and say, you know, your kid's really sick. If you want treatment, you're going to shut up and get in line. Yep. And, you know, once again, holds it over people's head. Absolutely. That's, those are all possibilities we need to keep in mind. John, thank you for the call, sir. We need to move along here. Okay, next we got Chris in Virginia. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead. I just want to give sir. a how you doing, John? Got a great show. Thank you. I just want to give a personal thank you so much to Obama this morning. Thank you so much for uh giving us the lovely gift of the jerk McAuliffe in Virginia instead of a lovely Tea Party Patriot Cuccinelli. So we're really gonna enjoy our new governor. Thank you so much, Obama. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I, you know I'm ready. I'm ready for all this. I'm ready for the hot war. I'm ready. I'm you sick and like, tired of You sound of like a crap. relatively. You sound like a relatively <laughs> young guy, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm just fed up. But thank you so much, John. You do a great job. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the call. Uh, next, we go to Washington State, where it's really early and still dark. Jan in Washington. Good morning, Jan. Hi. Um. Well, I noticed some of your shows are not on YouTube. There was about three of them. Well, we've had some issues, but uh, for the time being, they're dealt with, Jan, and, and 
And some of those missing shows, we have a second archive back up on my website if you check a, take a look. Well, uh, I know you break out in a rash if you get a compliment, but I pray for you every day and about 15 others, but you know every one of them. I, I got uh, an email on China uh, unveils a strategic map for nuclear submarine attack on the U.S. cities. That's been widely circulated, yes. Do you think that's just jive or... Well, if you read what their top uh, military officers have been writing and publishing for years, uh, th their goal is to uh, conquer the United States militarily. And that is their stated goal, and they stated it publicly. And they have that base in, in Mexico, right? Well, they're, they've, they've taken over uh, the Panama Canal area. Uh, they've taken, they have, I don't know how many bases in Mexico. They've taken over the Long Beach uh, um, port facility. Uh, and they've got these free trade zones all over the country, which you know, they're, they're, that's their property. And they, we don't know what they're doing inside those properties, those uh, free trade zones. It's good. <laughs> I really don't think it's good. And I think the doctors, the ones that I know, don't like what's happening. I mean, they can see stuff coming down the, you know, the, then they're going to get out of doctoring. They're going to do something else. It's not the big blessed position it once was. Well, the, these doctors, uh, they, they graduate with a tremendous amount of debt. They needs to be, and that debt needs to be serviced. And um, it's a tough place to be. Uh, yeah. With all really, the good intentions in their heart until they hit hit the real world. Yeah, I'm not dying for all this to happen. But that's what's going to happen, I guess. Absolutely. There's no way to turn around. I've been listening to you for about two years now, every day. So, and just all your other friends, Deagle and you know Dale, Quail, all of them. Oh so yeah. I'm pretty informed. I'm older though, but you know, for the younger people, it's going to be tough. It will be, Jan. We appreciate the call. Okay. Don't be a stranger. Thank you, uh, JJ in Colorado. Good morning, JJ. Yeah, John. Yes, sir. Uh, did you get my manuscript I sent you here a couple weeks ago? I did. Okay, yes. I, I okay. was waiting a while to call him to see if he had a chance. Oh, well, no, wait, 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 wait. I didn't get that. And there's been a local tragedy. Uh, our, our local post office had a fire. And, oh, no. Uh, I, th I think that manuscript was destroyed in, in oh, the fire. Oh, you darn. Um, I'll have to so, send you another uh, one then. Yeah, uh it's it's really harmed our community in many ways, and we're working to get it rebuilt. And I'm still encouraging people to buy postage online, credit our local zip code, so we can get the postal service to respond appropriately. So I apologize for that, JJ. It was lost in the fire. That's all right. It was real informative on the border, but I've got three or four more copies. I'll just uh, package up another one, get it your way. Roger that. Thank you. Okay, that's all I had to do. Okay, morning, thank John. you, JJ. Appreciate it. We really don't have time for any more calls. Uh, I don't want to uh, have you cut off in the middle of a conversation. I, I'm i very concerned about what may happen next week. Uh, I'm ready for it, as ready as I can be. I'm continuing to make preparations, getting my backup power squared away for my, for my family. You need to be doing what you need to be doing for yourself and the people you love and care about. That's the smart thing to do. It's going to be different things for different people. I have a number of friends in the neighborhood that are making preparations, and, and we hope to have a potluck dinner soon and compare notes as to where we are, what needs to be done, and share resources and so forth in our neighborhood. I work with my uh, mayor, my chief of police, my fire chief and the head of the paramedics and other concerned citizens to help the community get ready, working with uh, local businesses uh, to pool resources to take care of whatever might come our way. If you think you're going to get 40 acres and be out in the national forest with you and your, and, uh, and your loved ones and you're going to survive whatever might be coming, that's the wrong way to approach this. That is really wrong. You need to be part of a community some way, somehow, so you can pool knowledge, pool resources, come together as a community to take care of each other. That's what will work. That's what I encourage. 
Uh, and it's going to, as I keep saying, it's going to be different things for different people, depending on where you are, what your resources are, what you want to do, and so forth. Trying to rebuild and start from scratch is not easy for many, many reasons. You're far better off being part of an established community that already has these resources in place, a police department, a fire department, paramedics. There's many. There's hundreds of small towns around the United States that up until fairly recently, within 40, 50 years ago, they had their own electrical generation. And many of those electrical generation plants are still in place. I know of one north of, of me, Owensville, Missouri. The electric generation plant is still in place and could be put back into service if needed. My friend Tom Berryhill moved to Owensville, Missouri, specifically for that reason. So there's lots of ways and lots of nuances to learn, to uh, figure out for yourself. The most important foundational thing, of course, is your spiritual preparation. Without that, you're hopelessly lost. And it's not my job as a radio talk show to tell you what your spiritual beliefs should be. I do feel a responsibility to let you know it's very important for you to take care of it in a way that's suitable for you and your beliefs, whatever that might be. That's it for the day. You all be safe out there. Get your medical supplies, your energy cleaner while you can, your firearms, ammunition. Never, ever give up your guns. Have a great, safe, productive day, and God bless America.